Hello and Ni Hao. According to the traditional Chinese calendar is today the seventh day of the seventh lunar month. This is not July. Firstly, because it is already August. And secondly, because July is a Western term and moreover younger than the traditional Chinese calendar. So as I said, seventh month, seventh day. And that's called Xi Xi in Chinese. And today the Qi Xi festival is traditionally celebrated because of the ancient story of Niu Lang, the cowherd and Chi Nu, the weaver girl. This is a very old Chinese love story that has been passed down through the ages and has become one of the four great folk love legends in China. The other three folk tales are the legend of the white snake, the story of Mung Chiang Nu and Liang Shambo, and Chu Ying Tai, an ancient story that comes from Yixing in Wuxi, but we'll do it another time. The folk tale of the cowherd and the weaver girl has been celebrated in China since the Han Dynasty at the Shiji Festival. It is also celebrated in Japan and Korea, but there are many variants of the story. The first known reference to this myth dates back over 2,600 years and was in a poem in the famous Chinese Book of Songs. But let's get back to the story. Prost. According to the legend, there were seven fairies working in Chinese heaven, and one of them was Chinu, the Vita fairy girl. Working in the heavens, magical silks were used to weave layers of beautiful clouds on the loom. Their colors changed with the time of the day and the seasons. One day, several fairies begged the queen mother to take a bath in the human world in a pond called Billion. The queen mother finally agreed but told them that when the bell rang in heaven, they had to return or they would have to stay there in the world. New Lang was a boy born into a peasant family. After the death of his parents, he lived with his older brother and sister-in-law. The elder brother and sister-in-law treated New Lang very badly, eventually separating from him and giving him only an old ox and a bit of worthless wasteland while the elder brother and sister-in-law kept most of the family property. From then on, the cowherd and the old ox depended on each other for life and could hardly make ends meet. However, apart from the old ox, there was only the cowherd in the abundant house and life was pretty lonely. Little did the cowherd know that the old ox was actually the imaginary bull star in the sky. One day, the old ox suddenly spoke and said to the cowherd New Lang, Today you're going to the billion pond. There are some fairies bathing. You hide there, take a red fairy dress and hide it as well. The fairy will become your wife. The cowherd was surprised and happy when he saw the old ox suddenly speaking. So he asked, Brother New, the Chinese word for ox, can you really speak? Is it true what you say? The ox nodded his head. New Lang nodded away and hid quietly in the reeds by the billion pond, waiting for the fairies to arrive. After a while, the fairies actually came, took off their beautiful fairy clothes and jumped into the clear waters. The cowherd ran out of the reeds, grabbed a red fairy dress and hid nearby. The fairies heard the bell ring in heaven and one by one they put on their clothes. When the time finally came, they couldn't wait for Chinu to find her clothes. So they had to say goodbye to Chinu. When Chinu saw her fairy costume stolen by a young man, she was embarrassed and worried, but helpless. At this point, the cowherd approached her and told her that he would only return her clothes if she promised to be his wife. Since the time to return has passed and she had no clothes left, she couldn't go back, so she could only agree to his offer. In this way, Chinu became the wife of New Lang. After their marriage, he farmed and she weaved. Soon after, she gave birth to a son and a daughter who were very cute. New Lang thought they could stay together for life and grow old together. While a year passes on earth, only one day passes in heaven. And so, it took quite a while for the queen mother 
to find out about this incident. She was quite angry and immediately sent the heavenly army to capture the weaver girl and bring her back to the heavenly court for questioning. One day, Jin Yu was cooking the food at home and Niu Lang, who had gone to the field, rushed back. His eyes were red and swollen and he said to Jin Yu, Brother Niu, our faithful old ox is dead. Before he died, he said that he wanted me to skin him. Before the ox died, he said that Niu Lang had to skin his cowhide and pick it up. One day, when he puts it on, he can fly with it, just like the fairies with their fairy clothes in the sky. Hearing this, Chin Yu understood that their old ox was a fictional golden bull star in the sky, which before was demoted in heaven because of his mistakes. Suddenly, a strong wind blew from heaven and the heavenly soldiers and generals descended from heaven. Without any explanation, they grabbed Chinu and flew into the sky. The cowherd, dressed in cowhide, carried their two children in two baskets and flew after them. Slowly, the distance between them became smaller and the weaver girl could clearly see the lovely looks of the children. They opened their arms and called out, Mama, loudly. And it seems like Niu Lang and Chun Yu would meet soon again. But at that moment, the queen mother appeared standing on a beautiful cloud. She pulled the gold bobby pin out of her hair and brushed between the two. Suddenly, the torrent of the celestial river, which we now call the Milky Way, rolled between the weaver girl and the cowherd, making it impossible to cross the barrier. This was a punishment for violating the laws of heaven. At that time, the magpies, apparently taking pity of the two, came to heaven to form the famous magpie bridge across the Milky Way out of countless birds and had them meet once on the Magpie Bridge. And that day was the seventh day of the seventh month of the traditional Chinese calendar, which is exactly today. Niu Lang and Chun Yu are reunited on the Magpie Bridge. The weaver girl and the cowherd lovingly face each other, hug their children. There are countless things to say and endless expressions of affection. From then on, Niu Lang and his children and Chun Yu found themselves far apart on opposite sides of the Milky Way. Among the stars in the autumn night sky, we can still see two larger stars on either side of the Milky Way, shining brightly. These are Vega and Altair. In addition, Altair has two small stars, one for the sun and one for the daughter. It is said that every year on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, when people listen quietly among the vines under the vine trellis, they can faintly hear the fairy music of heaven and also very faintly hear the weaver girl and the cowherd lovingly conversing. The truth is, they find it hard to say goodbye every time they meet and look forward to seeing each other again on the seventh day of the seventh month of the following year. Then Niu Lang and Chen Yu should meet again on the Magpie Bridge. In China, in that night, many girls come out in the moonlight and look up to the starry sky to find the stars Altair and Vega on either side of the Milky Way, wishing the two lovers a happy annual meeting and they wish they could be as killed with their hands as Chinu, the weaver girl. And this is how today's Shishi festival gradually came about. The story has been such an evergreen, such a success, at least for the past 2600 years, that it has served as a motive in countless literary and artistic works. For example, one of the most famous works is the following poem by Qin Guan, who lived from 1049 to 1100. This picture has been drawn by Gu Xu and was made in the Ming Dynasty in 15. It is titled The Creation of the Heavenly River, the Milky Way, and in the caption at the top left, he described how he dreamed of seeing the Milky Way with him created from his sweat and tears. Then thought of Chun Yu 
and Liu Lang and hoped they are well and then awoken, he created that picture. This picture, the reunion of the Magpie Bridge, is one of countless motives in a walkthrough of the new summer palace outside the gates of Beijing. Sometime before 1529, in the Ming Dynasty, the artist Chang Ling draw an unknown lady with a weaver's shuttle who wished for the Qixi festival to have the same good craftsmanship as Chinese. A relay satellite in China is also named after the Magpie Bridge, in Chinese Chuyichiao. Although the satellite did not fly as far as the Milky Way, it did fly almost as far as the Moon, enabling communication with the Chang'e 4 missions lander and rover for the far side of the Moon. And this is an example of the typical offerings at the Qixi festival in the region of Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau, including paper-made seven fairy plates and paper cloths representing the Queen Mother on the top left, the cowherd bottom left, the seven sisters, Chinu and her six sisters are dedicated. Here in the city of Wuxi it is rather quiet. It is mainly celebrated by young lovers and also with lanterns, stargazing and nightly walks, often in traditional Chinese Han clothing. But since it's raining like cats and dogs, most people in Wuxi, including us, will probably stay at home and spend a cozy evening, hopefully with the beloved ones not on the other side of the Milky Way. Finally, I would like to say that also the Qi Xi is very often referred to as the Chinese equivalent of Valentine's Day. This is simply wrong. That's a different day on the Chinese farmer's calendar and I'll be happy to tell you about it another time. Because today is all about these two eternal lovers. Incidentally, I don't find the story very romantic at all. When the relationship between the two begins with him coercing, sabotaging and even bitterly blackmailing her with her clothes. This is more of a lesson in how unsuccessful people can still lure themselves into success through skill maybe, but also cunning and treasury. Many Chinese see this very pragmatically and not through rose-tinted glasses. Nevertheless, Chun Yu and Niu Lang apparently found romantic deep love for themselves afterwards have become basically immortal through collective memory and their own stars in the sky and have their own festival in their honor. And finally, it gets romantic again when she has forgiven him for the not so good actions when getting to know each other. And the two of them celebrate Chi Chi happily and contentedly every year. If they haven't died, then they are still alive today and hopefully subscribe to my channel because I'm so nicely reporting on them in the festival. You should as well do it if you liked it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye and Sai Chien, you are Lauma. Cheesy! Yay!